So hi everyone, Rocket SK is back with another interview and today we will talk to Olaf from Amaranth. Hello, welcome to Slovakia again. Ahoy, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> so you remember something from your last visit? Um, yes, actually this is the fifth time that uh, I'm in this club, so oh. it feels a little bit like home after being on the road for, for a re really long time. Me and Morten, we actually played in the Randall Club in the basement, uh, I think it was nine years ago, the first time I was here. So It was with, an, with another band, right? Yeah, with Nightwitch, exactly. Oh, yeah. But it's lovely to be back here in Bratislava, it's a beautiful city. It's uh, nice to know that you come here so often. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it feels a little bit like home. <laughs> Okay, so, well, these are rather busy times for the band, right? You have just released a new album, the European tour is almost over. Um, uh, tell me, how do, you, how do you keep motivated, how do you keep energized while being on tour? I mean, the number one thing is, of course, the music itself. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I really admire the crew members and the sound technicians because they are not on the stage, they don't get the uh, energy of the audience because Basically, that's what keeps me running, actually, is that w when you go up on stage in the evening, you get all that excitement and the uh, energy. And when you walk off the stage, you're in a really, really good condition. Even if you haven't really slept you know, in a real bed for, for many, many weeks, you're still in a, in a good state. So. Um, and which do you prefer, creating new music, like uh, writing, recording the album, or touring and performing? It's a good question because it's a two different animals all, all together. It's, um, the one thing really complements the other and it makes your, your life a little bit you know, strangely balanced because I spent December until April uh, 2015 to 2016 uh, composing for the Maximalism album and I was home pretty much every day and I was almost isolated, me and Elise, uh, <clears throat> writing a lot of music and then all of a sudden you, you're going from being home all the time to going across the entire world without any days off whatsoever. So the contrasts are very, very extreme. But uh, of course, I really, really love to compose music because you can get really deep into it and really geeky about it. But then on the other hand, as I mentioned in the last question, the energy of the audience is an amazing thing as well. So, so it's hard to choose. It's great in uh, you know, its own ways. Um, so you've been trying out the new songs for about a month now. Mm -hmm. Which ones do you think resonate the best with the audience and which ones do you personally enjoy the most playing? The, the little bit surprising thing in all of the countries that we've been to so far, including Russia where we actually performed uh, uh, that song, which was the you know, first the lead single for, from the album, uh, because there was a lot of people who liked it, but it, there was also a lot of reactions was a lot of controversy with that song, so I was a little bit, you know, a little curious to see how it would work live, if people would be <laughs> upset or shouting or something. But it, th th that is certainly the song that works best, I think. So, and there's always, you know, a huge audience reaction, everybody singing along and clapping, and it's a different sort of reaction because it has a different kind of groove. So I really like to play that song, but um, I think my favorite song to play from the album is uh, opening track, Maximize. Yes, very good. Uh, which is also the opening track for the uh, for the live set as well, because mm -hmm. it's it's created to be an opening track, and you have all the excitement of the audience, and you've just gotten on stage, and so that's probably my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And this can kind of relate to another question that I have for you. Uh, combining pop and dance music and electronic music with metal has been always considered some kind of a provocative and controversial in the community as such. Um, do you think that this might help metal music to get more attention from mainstream media? <clears throat> I mean, possibly. But the interesting thing is that if you're involving like mainstream elements into metal music, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you're attracting that kind of audience. It's sort of like, um, if you compare it to, there's a lot of uh, bands that incorporate like folk music, for example, mm -hmm. or opera but they're probably not going to get any folk music fans listening to metal, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Or people listening to opera are not very likely to listen to you know, the old Nightwish albums. But with that said, I think we have uh, seen that you know, with, with a song like that song, and with all our electronic elements in general, especially when we play in Sweden and Finland, it's not only a metal audience. It's mainly a metal only audience, and we're mainly a metal band, but you can see that maybe you know, 20, 30% of the audience is normal people, 
<laughs> so that's oh good for you, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I like to, um, to be able to reach as many different kinds of people as, as possible mm -hmm. and as wide as possible because I think that music is something that should be shared and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be elitist or uh, excluding people. Mm -hmm. It should be inclusive, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've read somewhere or heard on an interview that both you and Elise like Disney movies. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> uh, and the song endlessly that you have on the new album mm -hmm. definitely has this kind of a movie vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering if you were asked to compose a song for a movie or for uh, let's say let's Disney fairy tale, which one would it be? Which song it would be? Uh, no, which movie would you pick? Ah, if I could pick any ex yeah. existing movie, uh, which you think that Amaranth uh, song would fit. Maybe a new one, or maybe someone from the previous ones? Mm, yeah, I mean, it would be hard to compose something for the previous ones, because the music is already so so excellent. I think my personal favorite is The Lion King, or Hercules. Great movies. But uh, maybe they should uh, make a Disney Amaranth movie. Maybe, sometimes in the future. If you're watching, yes. You yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, your music and shows really it's such an immense amount of energy. And um, also, Elise and you, you have both worked with other bands uh, on side projects and such. I was wondering, um, have you ever thought about doing an Amaranth song with somebody else? And if so, who would you invite? We haven't really discussed it. Uh, and I think that we are, we're very you know, happy and proud of our um, songwriting within the band. But with that said, I would never say never. I mean, if I would bring in somebody, it would probably be like a pop music producer or something like that. Max Martin, for example, mm -hmm. would be great to collaborate with. Or maybe Hans Zimmer and make a really epic song. <laughs> Again, to the music, it can be characterized also by these kind of uh, fast rhythms and upbeat melodies. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, living on the edge, fast cars and extreme sports, is this, is this that anyone in the band identifies with? Hmm, maybe. I've done a little bit of bungee jumping. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think our lifestyle in general is quite extreme. I mean, f for me, and uh, with the whole uh, maximalism concept, it's really about living life to the fullest, mm -hmm. which you really do on tour, because uh, yesterday we were in Trieste, and we ate some great Italian food, and a few days before that we were in France, and uh, went up to the uh, you know a Eiffel Tower and and so on and so on and I think it's um, it touring is a little bit like an extreme sport almost so but when it comes to the energy in the songs I think it really uh, helps and works to pick us our, ourselves up as well mm -hmm. so we all also write it you know for ourselves yeah. to become more energized so we can stand on stage every night yeah definitely it will it will keep you awakened yes exactly. Yeah. Um, about the new album, it's called Maximalism, as mm -hmm. we already said. Um, and as the title already suggests, it's full of diversity and contrast. Was this your initial idea right from the start to put out an album which would be which would have so much variety in itself? Yes, exactly. Uh, you really nailed it there because one of the main ideas was uh, the diversity. Because uh, with the previous albums, I'm extremely happy with all the three albums before. But they also were very conceptual and they went in a very straight direction and it really worked for those albums but now that we've established a fan base and we toured for five years i personally and lisa as well thought that it was time to you know do something new and something different and i really think that there's a lot of potential to do a lot of different things within um, the concept of amaranth because there's so many different genres so many different influences that you can take it this way and you can take it that way um, so I wouldn't say really say that there is a lot of new elements, it's just that we've taken them a lot further, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, which was an extremely exciting thing and it's also very liberating as a composer as well. So yes, that's, that was really the initial idea. Um, so is there a possibility that we might get sometimes a new album called Minimalism, which would feature maybe, I don't know, acoustics? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking about minimalism, that is a funny idea because we, we just um, played an uh, all-out acoustic show in Frankfurt. I think it was like 11 or 12 songs. 
with uh, Morton on you know very soft drums, Joan on uh, a bass and um, just acoustic guitar, and just only Elise and uh, Chris uh, singing, and it was a really really nice experience. So maybe I shouldn't say never because maybe sometime in the future. Uh, there, there might be a small acoustic album or something like that, but the funny part, now that you mentioned the minimalism, we should of course have called the acoustic uh, show yeah. Minimalism. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that would have been fun. I'm going to steal that idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you can. Feel free. Um, and about the lyrics, you have also many times hinted on technology yes. uh, issues. Do you think that there is any threat coming from advances in technology with regard to music business? Uh, I think both yes and no. I mean, the, the obvious uh, threat is like the, um, the general easy access and the free access to music and that people don't really, they sort of take it for granted that you can listen to any song at any time for free, which is the scenario today. And to imagine that 20 years ago would have been impossible because the only way to listen to it for free was to copy it, you know, on a cassette tape or listen to it on the radio. But with that said, uh, I think this band has really taken a lot, lot of advantage from technology, like Spotify or uh, you know the videos on, on YouTube. And I honestly think that it would have been very difficult for us to grow as quickly as we have done without especially Spotify. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, I think we are streaming at, I think it's like 350,000 plays per day on, on Spotify. So for us, it's an excellent platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, to date, I think we've had about 125 million plays on Spotify. So it also generates uh, income for, for the band as well. I mean, it's not as much as if we would have sold those CDs, we would have been, you know, driving in luxurious cars and oh, <laughs> everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, um, but it, I think it has really helped the band, mm -hmm. actually, with exposure. And also, of course, uh, with the social media, you know, connecting directly with the fans. Um, Directly after every show, we, we take a um, picture with the audience and we put it up there and it get a, gets a lot of likes. And it's an excellent way of staying in touch with the fans. Yeah, that's very nice. I think very, very, very a lot of people appreciate it very much. Yeah, so. Okay, so that was our last question. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. And um, have oh, fun at the... Pro uh, that? Uh, that which one? Prosima. Prosim? Prosim. Prosim. Doesn't yeah. thank you or does Yeah, yeah, yes. prosim. Okay. You, prosim. You, you, yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, have fun at the show. Prosim. We enjoy it. <laughs> thank you very much. Tie najdrosnejšie informačné rífy ti prináša www.rocker.sk.